Welcome friends, in this tutorial we are going to be taking a look at Burp Intruder. This video assumes you are following along with our getting started guide for Burp Intruder and the best way to understand how it works is to see it in action. Here you'll learn the basics of configuring a simple intruder attack using one of the deliberately vulnerable labs on the Web Security Academy. So to begin with, we've opened Burp's embedded browser and navigated to the lab linked in the getting started guide. First, click on my account, then try to log in using an invalid username and password. And we can see that we get an invalid response as expected. Now, if we navigate to Burp Suite and view the HTTP history tab, we can find the post login request and send it to Burp Intruder. By selecting the Intruder tab, we can observe there is now a tab displaying the post login request. And we're going to use this as the based request for our attack. Notice that Burp Intruder has automatically inserted these section characters in various positions throughout the request. These mark the beginning and end of a payload position where Burp Intruder will attempt to insert payloads during the attack. But for this attack, we only need a single payload position in the username parameter. So we clear the default positions and add a payload position to the username parameter as so. At the top of the screen, you can select different attack types, but for now, just make sure this is set to sniper. We can see that the sniper attack uses a single set of payloads and one or more payload positions. But for this tutorial, we are inserting a single set of payloads one by one into a single position within the request. We now just need to configure the list of payloads that we want to use. And for this demonstration, we'll try sending the request with different usernames to test how the login mechanism behaves. Copy the following list of candidate usernames, the link for which you can find in the Getting Started Guide. Next, we will paste our list of candidate usernames into the payload options. And you can see that we have a payload count and request count of 101, which matches our list. And now it's time to start our attack. By clicking Start Attack in the upper right hand corner, this opens a new attack window in which you can see each of the requests that Burp Intruder is making. Now if we select one of the entries in the table, you can view the request and response in the message editor. And notice that the username parameter contains a different value from our payload list in each request. Our job now is to look for any irregularities in the response. If we click the heading of the length column to sort the results, we can see one of the responses is a different length. This difference in response from the server is worth further investigation. If we select any request from the list and study the response, we notice that most contain an invalid username error message. However, the one with the different length response has an incorrect password error message. And this different response strongly suggests that this username might be valid in this particular case. And now that you have a potentially correct username, the next logical step is to try to brute force the password. Now you can try repeating this attack on your own using the username you have identified and the list of candidate passwords located in the Getting Started Guide. Okay, you've now learned how to use a sniper attack against a single parameter. For more detailed information about the features and additional attack types of Burp Intruder, please refer to the full Burp Intruder documentation on our website. Okay, friends, that's it for getting started with Burp Intruder. I hope you find it useful. Good luck and take care.